Hello everyone! In this video, we will learn all about quadratic inequalities. So to begin with, let's review this one. Now, how are you going to express numbers that are greater than 3? So actually, there are different ways. So one way is to have the sketch form. So numbers that are greater than 3. So all numbers to the right of 3 are greater than 3. Next, it could be in equation form. So x is greater than 3. And the third one, it could be in ordered paired form. So that's parenthesis 3 comma infinity parenthesis. Okay, next example. What about numbers that are greater than or equal to 3? So sketching this, it will be closed circle then extend to the right so take note of the difference of example one and example two so in example one it's simply greater than three and example number two it's already greater than three and at the same time equal to three next equation form equivalent of this will be x is greater than or equal to three and the ordered pair equivalent would be bracket three comma, parenthesis, and infinity. So take note, when you say greater than or equal to, its corresponding equation is greater than and equal. Ordered pair equivalent is, it should be bracket, and the sketch equivalent to that should be a closed circle. While if it's simply an inequality like greater than, so equation is simply inequality greater than, Ordered pair equivalent is parenthesis, and the sketch equivalent will be an open circle. Okay, next. Numbers that are lesser than 3. So in this case, so all numbers to the left of 3, and 3 is not part of the solution. While its corresponding equation will be x is lesser than 3, and the ordered pair equivalent to this will be negative infinity, comma 3. Now, how are you going to identify the ordered pair? So to do that, always start at the leftmost value until the rightmost value. So for example, in example number 3, the arrow here indicates you can extend infinitely to the left. So therefore, it is negative infinity. While it ends at Three. And since 3 is open, so therefore it's parenthesis. Now, going back to example number 2, the leftmost value here is 3 and it is closed. So, meaning 3 is included. That's why it is a bracket here. Then 3, comma. Then the rightmost value here is positive infinity. So, therefore it's infinity and it is parenthesis. Okay, next example. Numbers lesser than or equal to 3. So when you sketch this, it will be closed circle then to the left of 3. So equation equivalent would be x is lesser than or equal to 3. While the ordered pair equivalent to this would be the leftmost here is negative infinity and the rightmost is 3 included. That's why it is a bracket. Okay, another example. Now, what about this one? These are numbers greater than negative 2, but lesser than or equal to 3. So when you sketch this, it will be numbers that are greater than negative 2, but indeed lesser than or equal to 5. So greater than negative 2, so open. And here, lesser than or equal to 5, that's why it is shaded. So, identifying the equation here will be this way. So, this is x is greater than negative 2, but lesser than or equal to 5. Now, identifying its ordered pair equivalent is always start at the leftmost. So, the leftmost here is negative 2 and it is open. So, therefore, it will be parenthesis negative 2 comma 5 bracket because 5 here is closed. Another example. What about this one? Numbers lesser than negative 3 and 
numbers greater than or equal to 4. So take note in the previous example, it is but. But in the second example, it is already and. So take note in math, and means you add them. So sketching this one, that would mean numbers that are lesser than negative 3 and numbers that are greater than or equal to 4. So, since in example number 2, there are two different equations. So, your equation here are two different graphs. So, your equation here will also be 2. So, that would mean numbers that are lesser than negative 3 and or it means union with numbers that are greater than or equal to 4. Now, identifying the ordered pair here would also mean there are two ordered pairs because there are two different graphs. So that would be, start from the leftmost here, so that would be negative infinity until negative 3 parentheses union with bracket 4 until positive infinity parentheses. So please take note of that. Okay, let's have this one. So I have here different equations. So let's identify whether it is an equality or not. So number one, it's no. Th number two is yes. Three is yes. Four is no. Five is yes. And number six is no. So let's go back to number one, number four, and number five. They are basically quadratic equations. While example number two, number three, and number five, they are all quadratic inequalities. So therefore, given this, what then is a quadratic inequality? So quadratic inequality in one variable is an expression that can be expressed as, oh, ax squared plus bx plus c greater than zero. It could be lesser than zero or it could be greater than or equal to zero, or it could be lesser than or equal to zero. So as long as the given expression are using this inequality symbol, so therefore it is quadratic inequality. Otherwise, if it's simply an equal sign, so therefore it is quadratic equation. Now let's try to compare and contrast this one. So going back to the first expression, when you say greater than zero, so numbers that are greater than zero, they are basically positive numbers. So take note, there is no equality here. So therefore, it is open. Now take note of that. Now in example number two, this is lesser than zero. So when you say lesser than zero, they are negative numbers or they are negative and there is no equality, so therefore, it is still open. Now, for example number three, it's greater than or equal to zero. So greater than zero, so therefore, it is positive and it is closed. It's because there is an equality symbol attached to the inequality. And the last, it's lesser than or equal to zero. So therefore, it is negative and at the same time, it is closed. So take note of this one. Okay. Now, how to solve the solutions of an inequality? So actually, there are steps to be followed. So number one, identify the region required. So that's why identify whether it's open or closed. Number two, identify the neutral numbers. Number three, you set up the sign graph in which you will follow these four steps here. And number four, evaluate and identify the corresponding or correct region or regions. So let's have an example. Now, x squared plus 2x minus 8 is lesser than zero. So what are the solutions for this inequality? So take note, number one identify the region required. So take note, this is lesser than zero. So therefore, it is negative and at the same time, it is open. Take note of that because there is no inequality equality symbol. 
So that's why it is open. Next, identify the neutral number. So how to do this? We will simply factor this one. So factors of negative 8 in order to get 2, we will have negative 2 and 4. So that will be our neutral numbers. So that would be 2 and negative 4. Next, set up the sine graph. So how does the sine graph look like? So it's like this. Make the number line with your factor forms here. Encode it at the side or simply write it at the side. So locate the critical points in the number line. So critical points, it should start from the leftmost going to the rightmost. So in this case, we will have negative 4 and positive 2. So mark 0 in line with the corresponding value. So that would mean 2 here will make x minus 2 0. And x plus 4, negative 4 will make that uh, factor 0. Next, take note, to the right of 0 is positive and to the left is negative. So therefore, that would mean to the right of this 0, it's positive and to the left, it is negative. So the same thing here, to the right is positive and to the left, it will be negative. So take note, there are three different regions here. You have first region, second region, and the third region. Now, in this case, in the first region, negative times negative, that would mean positive. In the second region, positive times negative would mean negative. And for the third region, that would be positive and positive, so therefore it's positive. Now take note, as long as it is a quadratic inequality, the regions will be positive, negative, and positive. Now, going back to the equation, since we are looking for negative and it should be open, so therefore we're referring to the second region. And since it is open, so therefore that would be negative 4 until 2, it's open and connect with a line. So therefore, getting the ordered pair form here would mean it's open. So parenthesis negative 4, comma, until 2, and it is parenthesis. So writing the equation equivalent would mean numbers that are greater than negative 4 but lesser than 2. So therefore, the values or solution to this inequality given here are numbers that are greater than negative 4 but lesser than 2. So take note of that. Now, using this uh, given here or inequality, let's have this one. Now, are the following a value of x in the given inequality? So number one, three. Is three part of the solution? So one way of doing this is by using the algebraic method of proving. So that would mean x squared plus 2x minus 8 is lesser than 0. So using x or 3 as our x, so substituting will get this. So simplifying, this would mean 9 plus 6 minus 8, which is 7 is lesser than 0, in which it is not true. 7 is not lesser than 0. So therefore, number 3 is not part of the solution. And besides, if you look at 3 here, it is already outside of the negative region. Next, what about negative 1? So the same thing. So using the inequality, substitute x with negative 1, we will get this one. And simplify, we will have negative 9 is lesser than 0. In this case, it is a true mathematical statement. So therefore, negative 1 is indeed part of the solution here. And besides, negative 1 is located in the negative region here. Next, negative 3. Negative 3, it's still part of the negative region. Now, what about negative 6? Take note, negative 6 is already part in the first region. So therefore, it is no. So that's how are you going to do it. Please take note of that. 
Okay, now take note and finding the solutions of an inequality, there are steps that we need to follow. So let's have this one. x squared minus 3x minus 10 is greater than or equal to 0. So take note, inequality here is greater than or equal to 0. So this would be positive and at the same time closed because of the equality symbol. Next, identify the neutral numbers. So factors of negative 10 in order to get negative 3 would be x minus 5 and x plus 2. So therefore, our neutral numbers here would be 5 and negative 2. Now, setting up the sign graph. So we will have this. Have the factor forms at the corner. And locate our critical points in which it is negative 2 and positive 5. So negative 2 corresponding to x plus 2, and positive 5 corresponding to x minus 5. Now take note, to the right of 0, it's positive, it's left, it is negative. So the same thing here, it's positive, and to the left, it is negative. Now in the first region, it is positive, second region, it's negative, and the third region, it is positive. Now going back, since we're looking for positive regions and it is closed so we're referring to first and third regions so that would be negative 2 to the left and positive 5 to the right so having the ordered pair equivalent here would be negative infinity until negative 2 bracket union with 5 bracket 5 until positive infinity and the equation here would be numbers lesser than or equal to negative 2 and numbers that are greater than or equal to 5. So therefore, for this particular inequality, the values are numbers lesser than or equal to negative 2 and numbers greater than or equal to 5. That's how are you going to do it. Next. Now, let's have this. Determine whether the given points here are solution to the inequality y is lesser than 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Now, sketching this in the Cartesian plane, we'll get this. By the way, you can countercheck with uh, GeoGebra apps in getting the sketch of this one. Now, let's identify number 1 as negative 1 and 6 part of the solution here. Okay, so to do that, we can have this one. Let's substitute. Our y here is 6 and our x is negative 1. Now, simplifying, we will get this one. 6 is lesser than negative 6. It is not true. So therefore, negative 1, 6 is not. Okay, take note that the shaded regions or portions here are solution to the given inequality. If you try to locate here, negative 1 and 6, it's located in the unshaded portion. So that's why it is not part of the solution. Now what about 2 and 4? So 1, 2, and 4, it is within the shaded region. So basically, 2, 4 is a solution of this given inequality. So let's try to prove that one. So in this case, our y is 4 and our x is 2. So substitute and simplify, we will end up with this. 4 is lesser than 9, in which it is true. So therefore, 2, 4 is a solution of the given inequality. Now take note of this, shaded portions are solution to the given inequality. Next. Okay. I would like to give you this one. So if you're going to sketch y is equal to x squared, you will simply have this sketch. If you will have y is lesser than, greater than x squared, so I take note, it's the same graph. So if it's greater than, it should be, you shade the, within the parabola. Now, if it is lesser than x squared, so therefore you shade outside the parabola. Take note of that. Now, another thing is 
how come in this graph it is broken? So the same thing here. It is broken. It is because it is open. There is no equality symbol here. So if only this is y is greater than or equal, then this will be a dark line. So take note of that. It will matter. Okay, let's have this. Find the solution set of y is lesser than or equal to x squared plus 3x plus 2. So, let's graph this one first. Now, although you can use the GeoGebra apps. So, determine the vertex. So, we have this in the previous module. So, uh, to do this, get complete the square. Get half of 3, which is 3 halves. Then square that. You will get 9 over 4. So, add 9 fourths here. Also, minus 9 fourths to the other side. Rewrite this to factor form or binomial form. You will have square root of x squared is x. Square root of 9 fourths is 3 halves. Sine of the second term is positive. And 2 minus 9 fourths is negative 1 fourth. So, with this, we can identify our vertex as negative 1.5 and negative 0.25. Now, let's solve for the x-intercept. So, equate the inequality to 0 and solve for x. So, factors of 2 in order to get 3, you will have plus 2 and plus 1. So, with this, it will be negative 2 and negative 1. Now, take note, we have to shade accordingly. And the shaded portions are solutions to the given inequality. Now, graphing this, we will get this one. Now, take note the vertex. It's negative 1.5 and negative 0.25. It's where the vertex is. And our x-intercepts are negative 2 and negative 1. So, simply connect. And it opens upward because our a is positive. We will shade outside the parabola because it is lesser than and we will use a thick line here it's because it is a closed graph so take note of that now question is zero zero a solution to the given inequality the answer here is yes because it is part of the shaded region another now what about this one it's the same inequality quadratic but this time it is y is greater than x squared plus 3x plus 2 so the same vertex and the same x intercept so graphing it we will have this one so negative 1.5 and negative 0.25 so the x intercepts are negative 1 and negative 2 so still it opens up but this time we will shade inside the parabola why it's because it is greater than another thing we're using a broken line here it's because our inequality is open question now is zero zero a solution to the given inequality here our answer is no because zero zero is not part of the shaded region so take note, that's how are you going to do it. So take note, there are two ways to identify the solution set of this one. One thing is graph it and identify whether it is inside or outside the shaded portions. Another thing is you substitute the given inequality to the given quadratic equation. So take note of that. Next. Uh, let's have this. Inequalities in real life. The city government is planning to construct a new children's playground. The length of the new playground is 15 meters longer than its width, and its area is greater than the old playground. Suppose the area of the old playground is 2,200 meters squared. What could be the area of the new playground? Now take note, it's given here. The area should be greater than 2,200 meters squared. Now, what could be its width and its length? Take note, the length should be 15 meters longer than its width. So, therefore, the width here will be x and the length should be x plus 15. Next, what mathematical sentence would illustrate the situation? Take note, length times width is equal to the area. So, with that, that would be the width times the length should be greater than the area given. 
Next, what are possible dimensions of the new playground? So actually with this, there are many possible answers. So one possible dimensions could be the width is 50 and the length is 65. Why? Because 50 times 65 is 3,250, which is greater than 2,200. So take note, there are other possible uh, dimensions. Now, it could be 100. The width is 100. So add 15. 115 would be the length. Get the area. That would be 11,500. Another. It could be 60 and 75. You get the area. It's 4,500. Another, the width could be 55. You add 15 to get the length, which is 70. Multiply the area here is 3,850, which is still greater than 2,200. Now, take note, there are many possible dimensions for this because we're talking about inequalities and they are always, or the, the values are always greater than 1. Next. Is it possible that the value of x is a negative y or y not? In this case, the answer is no, because when you talk about length, when you talk about dimensions, it is always absolute. Okay, next. Now, another word problem. The sum of two integers is 18. The sum of their squares is at most 170. Find all pairs of numbers that satisfy these conditions. Now, take note. There are two numbers, and let x be one number. So take note the condition here. The sum of the two integers is 18. So if one number is x, the other number would be 18 minus x. Next, the sum of their squares is at most. So sum of their squares, so you square this. x squared plus quantity 18 minus x, then squared is lesser than or equal to 170. So how come it's like this? How come it's lesser than? Now take note, it is at most. So when you see at most, it is already the maximum. So therefore, the sum of their squares should be lesser than 170 because 170 is already the maximum. Now it will be different when you say at least because when you say at least, that would be the minimum. So if it is at least, so therefore this will be greater than. So please take note of that. Now next, uh, let's expand this. So uh, this would be 324 minus 36x plus x squared. Transfer 170 to the other side, you will get this. Combine like terms. So we will have this. Divide the entire equations by 2. So therefore, we will have this. Now, factors of 77 in order to get negative 18, we will have this negative x minus 7 and x minus 11. So take note, should be lesser than or equal to 0. Now take note, if it's lesser than, it is negative and at the same time, it is closed. Now, setting up our uh, sign graph, so our critical values are positive 7 and 11. Locate this in the number line. So 7 for x minus 7 and 11 for x minus 11. Now take note, to the right of 0, it's positive, And to the left, it's negative. In the first region, it's positive, negative, and positive. Now take note, we're locating four negative regions so negative region is in the second part or second region so with this it is closed so closed 7 to 11 so therefore the values here are numbers that are greater than or lesser than 11 now take note let's counter check this one now the sum is 18 and the sum of their squares should be at most or lesser than 170 or maximum of 170 so let's check so 7 if one number is 7 to get the other one is 11 7 plus 11 is 18 7 square is 49 11 square is 121 adding this two squares the result is 170 so that's considered another 8 and 10 8 plus 10 is 18 so squaring this, it's 64 and 100, so 164. So still, it's lesser than 170. Another, could be 9 and 9, so 81 and 81 is 162. Now, 
Take note, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, they are part of the negative regions or they are part of the solution. Now, let's give a counter example. So, for example, let's have 6 and 12. So, 6 plus 12 is 18. 6 squared is 36. 12 squared is 144. Getting the sum of the squares, the result is 180, which is already beyond 170. And besides, 6 and 12, it's already outside the solution set of this inequality. So with this, the possible pairs of numbers are 7 and 11. It could be 8 and 10, or it could be 9 and 11. So, that would be all about quadratic inequality.